in the chat box and put share stuff into the um chat box um as well as me, myself and Marid um asked for it. Is that okay? So if anyone has any questions anyway throughout the throughout the presentation, feel free, stop it and ask the question and we'll answer it as well as we can. Thanks very much. Uh, I'm just gonna stop uh or switch off my camera. If everyone else could keep their cameras and the microphones off just because myself and Marid, it'll be it'll interfere with the with the call. Thank you. Um Okay, so the first slide we're just gonna go on to. Um, so the objectives of tonight, okay? So we're gonna go through um, a video. I'm gonna show a video here now in a second myself, the Playoff Pathway, Taurus, which a majority of you would have heard, which is the Playoff Pathway developed from Leinster GA. Um, we're gonna go through the roles and responsibilities of the club coaching officer, skills, qualities of a, of a good club coaching officer, and um, how a good coaching officer might plan their year out, implementation of key initiatives within the club and within the county and then resources and support and then we'll have a quick summary at the end okay, so i'm just going to come out of this for a second and i'm going to show a quick video so this this video here is going to just one second this video is from leinster gx and it goes through the whole taurus pathway so have a look and see what you think Okay, folks, um, a very powerful video and um, they're just explaining um, what the whole Taurus pathway is. I know it's kind of a buzzword going around now about playoff pathways and how clubs could develop a playoff pathway. And in these strange times, it's probably, we don't know how long this is going to last. And it could be a good, perfect opportunity for a club to, to develop a, a playoff pathway. And this is kind of a, an overall view of a playoff pathway and gives clubs a perfect structure on how they might structure their own club pathway. So just what just looking at the slide that's on the screen there now, okay. So imagine this is a bus here down the bottom. So you're on the pathway, and there there is supports out there and um, between these cards and all the tourist cards, and also from Lenser GA staff like myself, like Marid, and like the other lads who have been uh, assigned to your clubs. In loud, um, each GDA has five clubs to look after, 
and it's their responsibility to look after the, the primary schools and, and also to support the club coaches um, in them regions. Um, so just an overview of that, um, Torres. So they do a workshop one night and then they'll come out and support the coaches, run a session, and then they'll come out and review a session on the third night. Um, that, so they'll just come and review the coaching. Um, so that's the whole idea of the Torres. And obviously there's different steps along the way. Obviously, um, as as that video went through, the different what the T stands for, what the U stands for, what the R. I I will be sharing all these cards with you in the email um, to everyone that's logged on. And um, so keep an eye on your emails tomorrow, and you'll get a recording of this and also um, of the presentation. Um, so I'm just going to pass it on to Mairead. Um, Mairead's taking over for, just for the next few slides. Okay. Uh, thanks, Shane. Okay, how, how are you all, folks? Hope you're all keeping well. Um, what I'm just going to go through here now is the coaching officer and your roles and responsibilities. Now, probably many of you in here tonight, you have taken on the role of coaching officer because maybe you are backed into a corner or there was no one else to actually take that uh, that a job at the AGM. And um, it just it just became a thing that, right, well, I'll, I'll put my name to it. And maybe without much of a of a job spec uh, to go with it, and you were landed with the role. So what we want to see, or what we want to uh, to let you all know, is that we're very much here to support you, and we want to give a kind of an outline of what the roles and responsibilities of your of your position is. And um, so, like we said, we had a little bit of uh, a few bit of work for you to do. So with your pen and paper there beside you, and if you even want to just sort of jot in one or two of them but in into the chat box but will you put down put give us three kind of roles and responsibilities um of what your position as the coaching officer entails so we'll give you um a couple of seconds there to do that you can be writing away there um having to think about it of um of what your what your roles and responsibilities is maybe you're only new to the position this year or um, maybe like some, I see the names that's in here, they're probably here a good long while doing this uh, doing this uh, job, which as we see now, it is becoming more and more important in, in all of our, our clubs. And those roles and responsibilities are expanding uh, greater and, and, and greater as, as each year goes on. So, um, you know, this is why we wanted to do this this uh, webinar to, to, to give a little bit of credence to your to your position and all of the of the um, activities and uh, responsibilities that, that go with it. So um, I think I've given you plenty enough time there to kind of uh, jot them down yourselves. Does anyone want to pop in one or two into the chat box? Um, if not, we could we could move it on maybe uh, to the to the next one. Okay, very good. Yeah, seek out new uh, coaches. And we all know particularly how challenging that can be. So, you know, I know from dealing with the younger groups with the nursery age level and we're trying to get parents. And, you know, when you'd imagine that that's where it's most easy, easy because you kind of have a lot of uh, parents that are down and you might think it's easy to corral them, but it can be tough then as well, all the way up at the various teenage years. Um, organize coaching courses, absolutely. Uh, oversee coaching for all age groups, and that's a very important one there. That you are the you you are are the one overseeing all of what all of the activities that that happen. Um, arrange coaching sessions for all. Um, so I'd say we're, we're assuming there may be coaching sessions for the for the players and the uh, coaches alike. So there gives a good snapshot of of your roles and uh, responsibilities. So we'll go up to the next slide um, here. What we have some of our some of the roles and responsibilities that we have um, that we that we see uh, as part of your of your role. So we can see there the role of the coaching officer is to coordinate the efficient running of the child and youth section of the club by developing correct structures for players and coaches to achieve maximum potential. Now this ties in exactly with this, with the terrace, with the player pathway. Okay, when 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 we look at that line again, developing correct structures for uh, players. Um, you know that 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 what we're doing is age appropriate, um, with with our kids. That there's a right pathway. That that everybody is on the same wavelength. That that we have a coherent um, coherent plan in place as a club of how we want all our players to progress 
all the way throughout the uh, ranks from nursery right up to adult. And likewise for our, our, our coaches to give them all the sort of all the, um, the, the uh, support that they need. OK, so if we start up at, at the top, the couple of points that we have here, be a point of contact for the county reps. So that would be for the likes of the uh, of likes of myself, a GDA I'm representing in, in, in East Louth, and then also to the county coaching officer, which is very important. They're your voice on the on on the county board. OK, then we have a in coach development, okay, that we're always looking to to, to develop our, our, our uh, coaches within the uh, club and get get that program in place. Oversee the appointment of coaches, which came up in the earlier um, in the earlier chat box there. That that is is a very important one and can be a tricky one, I suppose, too. Um, to kind of get the sort of people who you want, who who you feel is 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 appropriate for the age groups. So we're looking then at coordinating the organization, coordinate the organization of coach education and as what we call it now, the um, safeguarding courses. So we all know that every uh, coach that goes on to the pitch, that they have to have at minimum a foundation award course completed. They have to complete their uh, child safeguarding course and they also have to be guard vetted and the the final three, you know, they have to be done every every three years or the final two rather has to be done. The safeguarding and vetting has to be done on, on a regular um, occurrence. And there is ways that um, the safeguarding, you would do a face to face uh, course. And then after three years, you can do an online workshop. And there is there is sort of um, procedures in place now to, that that has been moved online. OK, another area we have there is to develop and support the player and coach pathway. And this is what the tourist um, player pathway is, is, is about. And it's great that this has come from Leinster, that it was given such a high priority and, you know, that we're all on, on the one wavelength with this. Um, that we arrange and facilitate monthly coach discussions for coaches to share I ideas. So, you know, this could be... Uh, in this current crisis, we're all on webinars and meeting and chatting like this. So, you know, it doesn't have to be another evening down at the club and another evening away from, from, from home. Clubs now can arrange their own kind of sessions like this here and have a chat with each other and see what direction rather than the under, you know, 15s doing something completely different to what the under 13s are doing, that everybody is singing off the one hymn sheet and that that there is um, a, co a coherent plan in place for your uh, club, for the players to, to develop through it. Um, so another area we have there is to develop and promote a healthy club school link. OK, so whether that be um, complementing what the what the full time GDA staff are, are going in, maybe with, with, with additional coaching or even just going in and supplementing and helping the um, GDA in, in your club. I know one of the clubs that I am I'm involved with um, the sort of session is that um, I coach the sort of senior end of, of the class, the kind of third and the fourth, fifth and the sixth. And the club coaches come in and they coach the uh, junior infants right up to, um, to to first, second class. So the result being that throughout the whole school year, every child in the school has received Gaelic football coaching. And um, it's 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 a fantastic initiative that that the club has 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 done uh, in ensuring that every child receives coaching, because, um, as I say, us as full-time staff, as Shane said earlier, we have our five or six clubs and we may have in the region of maybe between, um, you know, 10 to 15 schools to uh, cover. So it's not always feasible to get every child coached in, in, in the school. But that way um, there is hopefully, you know, that, that could be one area that your club could, could, could look at. And then the last, the final one there we have, we have is to link with the club committee on the progress of coaches and players. So, you know, we're all feeding into the to the club executive and that, and we're all keeping track of how everybody is going that, uh, and, you know, providing supports and things like that um, along the way. Okay, do you want to go to the next one? Uh, yeah, just, Mary, I'm just going to pop in there. Paddy mm -hmm. just um, had, had a question just there. Um, just wondering... 
should the monthly meetings just be for um, specific sections of the club? Like, it depends what, Paddy, what your, what your club is. There might be just a child strand and the, you might have a youth meeting a separate. Um, I know myself, I'm coaching officer in Kilcarely and we have two separate coaching officers in the club. So I'm coaching officer in the club up for the child strand and then we have um, somebody else that looks after the youth strand. So that's the way we've kind of broke it down because we know that there is, like a nursery coach doesn't want to be logging into a, a call or going to a workshop some night and watching what 16, 17-year-old uh, players should be doing. So that's that's a good point that maybe this, the child strand should have a monthly meeting and then possibly the youth strand should have a separate meeting. And and I know, depending on the size of your club, I think it's not a bad idea to do to possibly have a child coaching officer and a youth coaching officer if if obviously you can get to recruit the coaches for that. Um, and just the second part, Paddy asked, should there be a school liaison officer? Um, they definitely should. Like I know... Um, I know myself. I can only can only speak kind of on the on the Kilcarely end of things, but we would uh, have we, we used to have a coach a uh, coach in the school, um, who was a teacher, but obviously he is retired since that. But he still we're still using him as kind of the contact in the school, and it might be an opportunity for somebody that's retired maybe, um, from their job, not just as a but that might be able to someone that's well known in the club maybe just to float in, whether it be the chairman or whatever uh, person it is in the club, just to float in see the club crest on on going into the school and kind of just see so kids can see somebody uh, uh, somebody different than teachers in the school and they can see the club crest and it'll be encouraging kids to go down to the local club Um, I think that's a a big thing that you try to get um, a a stance in the in the in the schools I know myself I was talking to um, somebody in a different county and what they do in, in big if your club is a big area, that the club have a notice board in the school. And I thought it was a great idea so that whether it be an under-8 team go down to that over to an all-county blitz, that someone might take a picture or two and go in and stick them on the notice board and that's coaching off. So that might be their role, the coaching off to drop a couple of pictures maybe in the school, ask the teacher to pick up a notice board and update things every week and see when the fixtures are on in the club so that people know what's happening in the club and, and it creates a good ethos and a good atmosphere around the club. Um, Paddy, I hope that answers your question. Um, I'll let, just throw it back to Marid there. Is that okay? Okay. Thanks, Shane. Um, I'm going to just move it on to the next slide. Okay. So, guys, again, a little bit of work for you. Going through that that list previously, um, kind of rank what, what you think is the most important from one to three. Um, maybe we get Shane to go to go back on that list kind of again and just just to to, to rejug your memory. Uh, you know, what do you think um, would would come number place them in number one, two, and three in in those roles there? So we'll give you a couple of minutes. Shane, do you want to put up the other the the uh, previous slide? Yeah. So we see. There's a couple of them there. So, and again, a lot of these were putting them in into the chat. So, look at there is no right and wrong here. It's not like we don't have, um, you know, air preference for first, second, and third, and all of these. It's just to get your your kind of feedback on it. And like you know, you know, as as Paddy mentioned there, um, you know, it does the role of of the coaching officer is is a good is a good meaty role do you know what i mean like and there is lots to keep you busy there not just for a couple of months of the year but actually uh, 12, 12 months of the year um if 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 you are doing it if you are doing it right you know uh, there is there is plenty of, of stuff there so we've a couple yeah. of coming in develop and support player and the coach pathway um that that's that's what we have and that's that's certainly true so like i say there, there is no right right and wrong in this it's just for yourself to kind of put um to, to, to place them in order one two and three so what we're going to kind of pop up now and the next couple of slides is kind of i suppose what what we kind of um would 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 deal with in that um on on, on a regular basis and how we can how how the role of of the games development administrator can assist the coaching officer OK, so what we're suggesting, you know, what we see there is the liaison with the GDAs and the county coaching officer, you know, that when we're sending out all our correspondence and that, um, 
the club coaching officer is the port of call who we who we would go to. Um, you know how all of that correspondence is gone now that generally, you know, it's all secretary to secretary or the chairperson and, and the PRO. And then um, from the coaching and games point of view, then um, that sort of relationship between the club coaching officer, the GDAs and the coaching officer is very uh, important. OK, and and um you know, we, we, we would like to enhance that as, as much as, as we can. And it's how that kind of new role came about with the regional GDAs that that that, that we are that, that we do have air condensed areas or different regions with, with five or six clubs maximum. Okay, then the next one we have is the you know that we see a priority as your role is the recruitment of key personnel within your clubs, as was mentioned in the in the earlier chat the coaches and uh, mentors and club school liaison officers. So, you know, we're, we do want the right people in, in place for that. And now it's not um, a, a, a job a job application either, but those uh, people who, who, who you would know would, would be best suited for the for those roles and um, kind of gets gets your nod of of um, approval. Then what we have is the support the development of teams and players via the tourist player pathway. So you'll you'll be getting you'll be getting good contact from all of the GDAs now over the next com, com, couple of weeks that we are all going to provide um, tourist webinars to all our, our clubs and we're inviting all club coaches. Now it may be done on a on, on a dual club or it's not a dual club, but on two clubs or a single club, just depending on size. And we'd hope to, we, we'd like to keep it kind of to, to, to sort of one or two clubs because we feel we will get better engagement with the uh, club coaches. Sometimes when it's done on a, on, on a county level, um, we might be a little bit shy to sort of speak up. But if we do these tourist um, webinars with just the sort of club only, uh, we're hoping that that, that will be, we'll, we'll get a better engagement um, with you and that, that we can get, or that, that, that we can um, get that tourist player pathway across to, to all coaches in your club. And then you as coaching officer, maybe then go back and get chatting to your clubs and see, look, at, is, is this the way, is this the way forward that we can all move it? And that, 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 that we put our player development first and, and foremost, and, and, and what way are we going to do? to do things then also you have your formal and informal workshops that that would be that you would be organizing whether with with the the uh, support of the gdas or that could be from from outside personnel who you'd like to invite into your uh, clubs okay so i know there's a couple there development support of player and coach pathway link with club committees assistant coach development uh, with club school link and um, coach coach education develop and support the players the school link okay so what we're all we're all sort of hitting those um those sort of key key targets for for each of our clubs that we see as 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 a priority and um, for for you as the coaching officer to be involved in okay we'll go to the next one yeah just um just on that Maria, and um, okay. before we just go on to the next just i um, something that I know myself um, from going around clubs and that sometimes like as coaching off so we need to be going out to telling your coaches that when the GDA is and say if you get an external workshop in that's not an, that shouldn't be a night off for coaches that should be a night of learning they shouldn't arrive and say geez I have a night off tonight and hand the bag of footballs and cones over and not pay any heed like these workshops are for learning with the GDAs like the tourist pathway is not just a matter of coming down, doing a session with, it, and all the kids happy with the session, but the coaches have to take something from it as well. The coaches must learn, must take ideas away from it. And just something on, I'm just going to go back to the recruitment of coaches. Like the nursery age group is the age group that you need to be recruiting the, the coaches. I know Mairead and Anthony done a workshop last week on it, and how you engage, um, how you might recruit parents and coaches at that level, uh, at say four, five, six year olds. Even if it's a matter of getting them standing at a cone, throwing a football to, automatically the kids are going to tell that. Oh, I love that when you're when the parents are involved in the session. So it's a good way of getting them. And they may be shy. They may not be involved in the club before. And this is a way of maybe of teasing them back, teasing them into the into your club because every club is looking for new members all the time. And if there's new people coming to your area with young kids. 
that's the age to get the parent the kids and also the parents on board and just an idea like i know i've I've, I've gone around different clubs this couple of years and a couple of just ideas that I've seen that I thought were really good ideas um, that one, that the teams train maybe an hour before the senior team on a Tuesday night or a Friday night, whatever night the senior team might train and get some of the senior, have a wee uh, timetable for the senior players because I'm sure a lot of the senior players wouldn't mind like if it's a separate night than their training, you might have an issue getting them out but if it's a matter of them coming down an hour before training to do a couple of drills with, with some of the younger kids who they look up to. Just an idea that I know I was going to run in Kilkerley this year that we were going to, we had a timetable of I think of 16 or 17 the senior lads who were going to rotate and um, every week so two of them would go down maybe take the under eights this week the under tens next week the under nines the following week and it's just an idea and kids kids love to see the senior players around the club and with training ever the morning or whatever day or the Friday evening that the underage train they might not see much of the senior players around the club so it's a way of kind of integrating them all into the club that kind of a meet and greet um, situation which works on the county level, and and like that's I think that's a great idea to kind of bump up the and give it does give not gives the coaches a night off but it freshens things up and gives the gives the players and coaches new ideas. Um, I'll just go on to the next slide, Maureen. Okay. Okay, I'm taking this one here. Okay, so just looking at this. Okay, so we're looking at two um, Jim Gavin, the ex Dublin manager, Wayne Cairns, our own manager, like. To be, for the majority of these people, I think, on the call, are, are coaching officers in the club. What would you say the most important skills and qualities of a good coaching officer would be? I'm going to give you a couple of minutes. Just If you can just write a word or two into the text box of what, a skill, what skills would a good coaching officer need? Okay, communication, first one, very good. Good people skills, approachable. Communication at all levels. Organization and communication, yes. Good community, good listener, willing to learn, very good. Knowledge, willing to learn, yeah. I think we're coming on to that now in a few minutes. I suppose, like we've, dip, diplomacy, very good. Um, patience, like... Like all them cover all the first we're going on to the next slide. Like the big one that's that's bouncing out of there is communication, okay? Org and organization, okay? If a coaching officer is arriving down and they're not, they don't care what's going on, if they're not watching to see, like you could have a, co a coach there struggling in the club and it's it, like it's having an effect on, on the club players. Like they might just need a wee bit of support, extra support. So it's good to observe. I think Shane, the last one Shane had in there was observe. So to go around and watch to see what's happening. If there is a club coach that's struggling, like it, it, like they're not doing it any out of any fault of their own. They may just not have the knowledge or the skills to be able to coach kids of that age group. So it's really important that the coaching officer floats around. It doesn't have to be the, like that you're going around watching, sitting under coaches around. Just float around. You only have to watch two or three minutes and you'll know if things are going well. And some coaches maybe take the safe option. And that's why the first, like tourists, the first word is testing. You need to be testing your players. It's, training sessions shouldn't just look organised. Yes, they should look organised, but people, some coaches can take very safe so the parents think, geez, that's a very well-organised session. But kids mightn't be learning. So maybe get them to a game situation and get, have it nice and organised, keep everyone involved. And that's a good observation of what's, what's going on. And that you're not... that. Coaching officers shouldn't be going around like a dictator telling them what should we do. It tees out the ideas. Like Mairead said, on webinars like this, how could we improve? Maybe rotate the coaches. Maybe the under-8 coaches might, might take under-12s. The under-12 under coaches might take under-10s and rotate some weeks maybe. So that they're all getting different ideas of what, what sk skills players learn at each age. The good thing about them Taurus skill cards that I'll be sending out, it kind of gives a breakdown of what you should be coaching at each age group. Um, so I'll be sending them out um, with, as I said with on the email that will be going to you tomorrow okay so I'll just go on to the next so interpersonal skills which we had listening and communication they were all mentioned okay know the coaches know the game age appropriate games Taurus and, dr and drills so know what drills that the, the coaches are doing okay 
So that's most important. Know the coaches. I think I'm going to go back to, I think it was Shane coming down with observation. If you don't, you, know, you might know their first name, but you don't know if they can coach or not. So you have to float about, see if the coach, and if they're struggling, that's when you have to step in, step, step in and say, right, can, I, can we get help or can we help you out maybe next week or whatever? Um, you might contact, like Maraid, if, say if Denise Cloud, you might contact Maraid and say, Maraid, um, my under 10 was struggling, could you come in and give us a dig out? Um, maybe help them with a session based on the tourist principles. And that's, that's how you, you, you get the bigger picture for the club. That not just standing back saying, oh, we leave it till next year and sure we might get someone else in next year. But you're taking it, you're, you could be thrown in that you're the, the skill levels of 20 players because you, you haven't um, looked, looked over the, the coaches. So it's really important that if you see an issue, that you step in and just offer support, not dictatorship, just offer support and say, right, we'll, we'll give you help out next week. Or if you have a good coach in the club, maybe get them to step in and maybe give a hand out that it's not GDA either. Um, okay, so IT skills, as Maraid said, all the emails like that over the last couple of weeks, which has been excellent, I think we're up on 290 people registered for all the webinars. And a lot of the people that's on this call, I noticed that the names are doubling up again. So it's great to see so many people coming back. Okay, IT skills, receiving emails, getting word out to, out to your club coaches and getting everyone in the club and other officers within the club. Um, I know last year that there was a skills challenge and the emails went to coaching officers and some clubs, went, the message didn't relay back then to clubs and there was poor attendance at it and there was questions asked. Okay, So it's really important that you have, a specific, even if you separate uh, a different email than your personal email because it might be lost in your emails. I know some clubs, I see some emails coming through there and it's coaching officer dot seeing that I'm gonna mention I think with the feckins coaching officer dot in feckin and that's that specific for the coaching officer. I think that's a good idea. And obviously WhatsApp groups, I know there's um there's a there's rules and regulations around them now, but obviously there is still stuff going out in WhatsApp groups and making sure that you pass on any inf- information on any groups like that. Um, reach out for support, guidance, GDAs and workshops. And I think I know um I'm going to mention the Gerald lines here. Um, I think Cafo online here and Vincent as well from the Gerald lines, but and Alan Sweeney as well. Sorry, but just they, they organised a big workshop last year that they got specialised coaches in for a day, and it co- it did probably did cost the club a couple of pounds. But like the amount of money that some clubs are pumping into the senior teams over maybe a ten month period, it would be as well maybe put a get a wee bit of a budget if you can within the club to get workshops maybe within your club, maybe a full day session, get someone then to oversee a workshop in your club. I think it'd, like, it'd be probably more beneficial than pumping money into a senior team management. Um, so I think that's something that you can get talking to people in the executive of your club and that you organise workshop days like that, even if it's one-off sessions with um, specialised coaches or whoever you have. Like, And if you're struggling to, for ideas, contact your GDAs. We know people... Obviously, we we know, we can give as much information as you want, but if you want to freshen up a fresh voice around the club, feel free to contact us. And if you're looking for, say, it's a a forward, a tactical something, a tactical coach or if a skills coach, we can help find, uh, source these people, and which can be very beneficial um, to your club in the long run. Um, so just um, I'm not going to get you to share these in the, in the group, but I want you to genuinely on your piece of paper. Write down something that your club is doing more consistently, okay? So if you can just j- write down what, what, your, what your club is doing consistently well um, year in, year out. I'm just going to give you 20, 30 seconds. And then just just under that, I want you to write down what is your club doing poorly and you think that the club could improve on within your coaching and games, okay? Obviously, I'm not going to go into finance or that here. That's just, This is kind of different, okay? So what do you think your club could be doing a lot better in the coaching and games strand? Okay, so there's two other headings there that you can see, obviously. That, but I, I want you 
to take going away from tonight, okay? So that is something that you can directly probably affect. Okay? So whether it be what is the club not doing well, see can you put plans in place? Obviously, we, I know it depends on your situation, but a lot of us have an extra bit of time now in the evenings because we're not out in the field. We're not. In, can you get plans in place to improve what your club is doing going forward? Um, so if you can, and if you need help from from your from your GDAs, feel free pick up your phone. If you need help from your club chairman, your club secretary, they are only going to they'll be willing to help because if, if it's for the benefit of the club, they'll definitely have no issue helping out. Um, okay, and I want you to share this as many. I know we probably have about twenty people that are writing in the text. I want as many people as possible. Okay, share one thing. That your club have done really well in the last 12 to 24 months from a games development point of view. Okay, just one thing that the club does well. The reason why I'm doing this is because I want us to share ideas, okay? So that, like as I mentioned there, the Gerald had an excellent, excellent uh, kind of a coaching workshop day last year. Like, like that, other clubs might take that now as an idea, which we're all in this for the better, to improve loud football and to improve their club players. Okay, there's one idea. Okay, yeah, Cafo in again. Club, good club school link. Um, move from drills to mini game training. Um, bigger numbers at the nursery. Sean Taff, Hunterstein. And um, current coach is very committed. Very good. Nursery as well. Someone has very good. Good mix of abilities of coaches throughout the age groups. Um, I know it's probably a, a, more, a lot of clubs you go into, your first thing you're asked about is should parents stay with the teams the whole way up from from nursery level right up to minor. I suppose it depends on <laughs> uh, what the parents are, are like, but that's your call as a coaching officer. If you think that, it, that the club need a freshen up at, say, at the youth level, because sometimes they're after been working with the same uh, players and same coaches from under from five six years of age so it might be something that you might mix if coaches if our parents that you might step them away and maybe give them a break for a year or two um started nursery in february 2020 <laughs> unfortunately that didn't last long david but i'm sure you will get it back up and running um as soon as this finishes uh, getting a lot of parents involved in different with the club that might be a different way so you uh, Gabriel thinks coolly there so you might get clubs just to step away or parents maybe that have been with teams give them a different role within the club maybe a different age group or, or might be good helping fundraise and different ideas okay I think that's what kind of mostly covered um, so I think Mairead I'm handing back to you is that okay Yep, no problem. Okay, so um, what we have here then is the Leinster GA Club Coaching and Games Self-Evaluation Tool. Now, this isn't to be confused with the uh, club health check that probably a lot of you has got um, in the last two or three years where we were delving down into what numbers of boys and girls and age groups and all that crack. This is specifically for um, coaching and games. And it, it covers... It covers topics such as the uh, coaching structure. What's the coaching structure like in, in, in your club? Like, for example, is there a coaching officer in place? Is coaching in games given a high priority? Uh, the second part of it, um, to, it goes into detail about the uh, games. Do you know, um, are all your teams participating in, in, in competition? Um, have, are you hosting um, a cool camp? Do you organise uh, challenge games, fun games, fun days rather, those type of things? The next section, number three, is is on actual coaching. Um, you know, like is is there a regular uh, coaching program in place for all of, of your teams? Are all those sessions well planned and are they age appropriate? The fourth section on uh, coach education. And the big one, like I said there earlier, that all courses or that all coaches should have at minimum the foundation award, be have their safeguarding course done and be guard vetted. So uh, it goes into details, you know, what, what where are all your, your, your uh, coaches in that regard? 
The fifth part is on communication, PR. How, how you know, we had a great webinar last Wednesday evening on um, Canva, which is it's it's like um, a, a graphic design kind of mini course on on how to how, how to promote how to promote. And the whole webinar was you know um, doing up um, posters. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter uh, posted for whether it be for um, a match that's coming up or an event that's taking place in 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 your club, and they they look really look slick and and stylish. And I'd urge anyone if you have um, if you have a chance to go back over that that uh, uh, webinar because we, we we don't communicate out uh, half the time all of the good work that 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 is going on in clubs and that. And when we talk about communication, along with the PR, how, how well are we communicating with our, our local primary schools, our, our feeder schools? And we've spoke about it earlier, the, the importance of that role of the club school link and the school liaison officer. This is where we're getting, this is where the whole base, the whole grassroots uh, players come into the club. They're coming from the uh, primary schools and we need to have the best possible relationship with those schools and communication is vital in, in there. Uh, and then you know, are we communicating with the parents of all the, of all our, our players? And and bear in mind that that communicating with parents is right up to their to their seventeen, you know, because they're they're also children at at that stage. So are we keeping them up to date, up to breast or abreast the things of what's what's happening um, in in the club? The uh, sixth sec the the sixth section. Um, uh, covers best practice and behaviours in your club. You know that every club should have a GA code of best practice in place. Yeah, have we got the code of conduct for our players, code of conduct for parents, code of conduct for for coaches? All that has to be, um, you know, uh, very transparent for for everyone that's involved in the club. And it's 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 a very important section within our our our, our clubs. Uh, number seven then looks at facilities and 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 develop uh, developments like you know is is the pitch safe is it suitable is there enough uh, playing space when when there's training our nights varied that there's nobody missing out or anything like that dressing rooms all that that type of thing and then the um, eighth section covers finance and fundraising which look at we all know is going to be very challenging now. Um, getting a bit of sponsorship in that but look at what you're looking at there is you know is each team does each team have enough um e equipment you know is there enough footballs uh cones bibs that that type of stuff that we're not and particularly now that we're not going to be sharing a whole load of stuff that maybe that each team has their own stuff nursery nursery equipment is is vital if you want to start off a nursery and good 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 amounts of it and um, we had a, a webinar on that a couple of weeks ago and um, you know on how to you know just keeping good storage of it that it doesn't get get uh broken but it really really enhances your own club nursery the more um equipment in that and we had a little checklist of stuff that you would need for that so look at like we said this is this is something for you as a coaching officer but you know it's not your job alone to have all of this and um, it will need the help from the club a executive and the uh, next slide will kind of give an example of how to kind of um how to kind of keep keep track of all of what your key priorities uh, and 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 your 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 sort of key key areas to, to work on. So um, as we see here, we have the slide how how we're going to Im implement, and that's the sort of blank slide there that we have. So an example of one of them that might be, let's say that this action is to organise a tourist workshop, okay? And what the outcome sought from this is that you know that you're going to familiarize all the coaches within your club from nursery right the way up to adult that they are familiar with the player pathway model okay the milestones there that we're looking at that okay that everybody that that you have been in contact with all of the coaches in the club we have agreed a date and time you have structured the uh, format of it and now you're actually going to go and hold this this uh, workshop so for argument's sake the Time scale, look at if it was a normal time, you'd be looking at March or April. And then responsibility for that would be the uh, coaching officer. 
leading on from that, you might have, you know, what the action then resolves that you liaise with your with your regional GDA uh, outcome sort that you you know that that, that we're communicating all of this. Uh, we we have agreed a night nice, your time scale is when it's happening. Then another area of it might be when we look at the action. What you're what you're looking to sort of tick your little box that all coaches attend the relevant workshops. And you see the little variation of the tourist workshops, we will be given one like a generic one for all of the club coaches. There's nothing then to say that we could um, fine tune that and just do that workshop again with the sevens and the nines or you know, just, just to sort of get a, a smaller group of coaches engaged with it. So um, you're looking then at the, at the outcomes sought from that. That we want to upskill all coaches um, or upskill our, our coaches on and, and the coaching age group act activities and what is appropriate. Okay, the uh, milestone there that we're looking at is that coaches have attended the workshops and then uh, your time scale there, as I said, it was normal times, you'd be saying maybe March or April time. And the responsibility there is not only the coaching officer, but the actual coaches involved, that they that they buy in, in, into this as well. So it's just a little checklist for yourself to kind of see that, right, have we all these, um, have we all these priorities uh, in place and, and how we go about uh, in, implementing them and it's a good way like you know because sometimes we all have these great ideas and we're, we're going to do so much at the beginning of the year and next thing you know to game start and these type of things fall by by the wayside a little bit of work done at the beginning of, of the year whether it be at a, at a club committee meeting or um or uh you know a, a subcommittee meeting on this that um Whoops, uh, that's that's you know that it's it, it's a good it's a good guideline for for what you have done and and what you what what you kind of want to to achieve come the end of of the year. Okay, Shane, have you happened to come in on that one? No, you just covered everything, there, Marid. Um, okay. just um, I just want to just go back to the slide before that. Just um, a couple of good ideas that um clubs have done. I think theatre is Glen Emmett's. We have the festival of football at the end of September every year, where every every underage team invites a team for a friendly match. I was actually up a couple of these days, and it's a great atmosphere. And then kids get a wee bit of snack over two or whatever. But there's football literally from ten o'clock in the morning till six o'clock in the evening. Every uh, underage team gets a game, and um, so they, they invite cl clubs possibly in from other counties as well. I thought it was a great idea to finish off the year, um, and then Pella. Um, I don't know what club uh, Matt is from, but Pella, obviously, is probably majority of people know what Pella is. So it's the where the, the net is on the AstroTurf pitch, um, like a basket, big basketball net, and you can play G to different GA rules on it. Um, and just another idea that a lot of clubs have um, used is the winter winter program. Um, I know the Dreadnoughts and Thurman Fekin, um and Cooley, I think, definitely, and the Pats definitely had winter programs going in the last year or so. And these are great ideas to keep kids, obviously, like especially at that youth level, 13, 14, year, 14 years of age, where players possibly might think about packing it in, but you don't give them an opportunity to get away from the club. So if you have a structure in place for, say, whether it be five, six weeks before Christmas and five, six year, weeks after, you're nearly continuing the season nearly 12 months of the year. And like that, as I said earlier, if the GDA will no problem supporting that, obviously clubs will have to possibly get external coaches in on some of the nights. Um, but feel free to contact the GDAs if you're looking to plan and place and um, going into next winter for a winter program. Feel free to contact us on that as well. Um, just going on, I think there's a second last slide. Um, so just resources that a coaching officer may use. Okay, so we learn in that GA.ie. Um, I don't want to keep referring back, but Mairead and Anthony done the session last week and they went through how you log into that learning.ga.ie. There's an activity planner on that um, on that website and it's very, very useful. Okay, so you can you should be encouraging your coaches like there's any amount of drills. So say for example, you're under tens coach you want to do a punt kick, say want to do agility and punt kick. All they have to do is literally go in and click agility. There's any load of games, and then if they want to play punt kick there's loads of games and drills for for the punt kick so you can literally plan the session online have the session print it out with them go into a session okay and Le or Lencer GA and Loud GA and 
obviously the websites are up and running, but just on top of that, the YouTube channels are very, very useful. Like this, this webinar we're on tonight will also be going up on the on our YouTube channel, and and as have the Canva one, the technical practices, the nursery workshop. They are all already up on our alleged uh, YouTube channel. So keep an eye on them. Obviously, like if you miss some of the webinars and you'd like to listen in, feel free to go onto that onto YouTube and log type in leg GA and all them will come up. And um, then obviously you have your manual. Um, so I'll speak with it, the delayed coaching manual, which I think a lot of clubs coaches have probably seen it already. Um, I think there's still some in, in stock over. So if anyone is looking at any of them when the season opens back up again, feel free to contact contact us. Um, and then other resources ourselves, the county board. And a community of practice, as Maria had said, these webinars will be a massive tool. Because I know myself, I would have been apprehensive about talking to a computer, but I think everyone with Zoom quizzes and different teams uh, meetings like this, like people are, there's going to be a lot more community of practice, and you'll be able to do it from your your sofa or from a, from at home. So going forward, I think there's loads of opportunities for community of practice within the clubs, and even this work. This was supposed to be a workshop that we would have held in Darbo before the season started, but obviously in the times we're in, we can do it here online, okay? Um, just go on to the last slide, sorry. Oh. Um, so just a summary, I want just every, everyone on the call, if we can, I think we've around 40 people, to write down one thing you've taken away from tonight's workshop or webinar. Okay, so write in one, one or two things that you've taken away. Um, that you might have take back to your club going forward. So we'll sh I'll call the medals to come in, and that'll conclude our webinar for tonight. And if anyone has any questions at the end of the call, feel free to hang on and type them into the box, or you can hang on or and ask us any questions yourself or Marid. Create a better link with the school. Very good. A good way of creating a link. I know Maria, a lot of the GDAs work from third class up. So your nursery coaches, whether it be students, if you can recruit a couple of maybe student teachers, might be a good way of getting them linked up with your nursery and possibly into the school because they'd be looking for um, experience in primary schools. There's more help available than we thought. Definitely is. New ideas from other clubs. Club coaching seminars, yeah. Some of his rooms. Understanding the role of the coaching officer, very good. Um, the festival of football idea, yes, no problem. Um, like as I said, like any of the GDAs, I know if Glen Emmett's run a very successful one. Um, more interaction with coaches, more structured approach to coaching, establishing an action plan. Notice board in the local school, yeah, it's an excellent idea. I know Cooley probably have four or five schools, so you've Gabriel will be busy going around the roads. Mm -hmm. uh, up keeping them updated. Um winter training program, yeah. The winter training program like like that, it can go from anything from boxing training to aerobics to um resi youth resistance training. So obviously we can't be like one I'm not a personal trainer or uh, like that, but I would all I'd chance to be on with doing some of the youth resistance work. So you're teaching kids how to do proper press ups, pro proper setups, proper planks different basic stuff like that. Okay, separate child youth uh, coaching officer is a good idea. Alan, I'd say, I think you're Geraldine, so you definitely could need help with that. You have big numbers. Um, time, Fergus, Flynn and Mallow, different time, an hour before the senior training, yeah. And um, splitting the road, old sport and youth, yeah. Steer to promote the use of learning.ga, help coaches plan sessions, yeah. Um, so I think that's, like I think majority of some excellent ideas in there. Um, like I hopefully, I hope you've got some ideas from it. And as I said, me, myself, Maria, and all the GDAs are only at the end of a phone call. Okay, so the email you've got from me today, my phone numbers and that. Feel free, give me a shout on it. We'll have a chat. And um, if we can help you in any way, obviously the lads are are trying to keep keep stuff updated for yourselves through skills challenges and and stuff like that being sent out to schools. Like, feel free, contact us. We we are here to help you, and um, we're t we're lucky enough that we're still working away. And obviously, any way we can support you going forward, feel free to give us a shout. Um, if anyone has any questions, just type them into the box there. Um, Maria, do you have anything to say just before we fi finish up? 
Yeah, no, just just to just to thank everybody for for, for logging in. Uh, this evening it ha- it has been brilliant, and there's been fantastic engagement by by everyone. And I think one of the um, one of the kind of terms or phrases that's coming out for, for me this this past while is this um, community of uh, learning and sharing I- ideas and that. And even just looking at at the at the ideas coming up on the uh, chat and you're just going yeah yeah you know and you can see how that can work in a particular club and whether it would work for us or maybe it won't and it's all this sharing um of 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 information particularly look at us when 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 we're with the younger age groups and that that that, that we want as many we want as many of our young children in, involved and playing sport, and we want them to uh, develop at their own pace, um, in in age appropriate ways, and that, that that we really focus on that, that we focus on the development of of the uh, player in 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 our club, and then how us as whether we be um, a GDA, a coach, a coaching officer, how we support. Our, our, our most valuable resource from that little um, acorn into a great oak and we do all that like like we, we, we all have 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 the greater goal at the end of all this you know we, we want to produce you know players that are involved with our clubs throughout our, our whole lifetime or their lifetime and that and and I think this this has been this has been fantastic um for us to, to kind of share I, I, ideas and, and and to move forward to, together for uh, developing our every player in in our club all players right thanks Shane yeah so I'd just like to thank everyone for logging in um obviously um I know a couple of people just wrote to me about the the first video I showed the sound wasn't great I'll be put, I'll put get that put up on the ledge YouTube channel and obviously if you're in your clubs and you're trying to explain what the Taurus is, I think that two-minute video kind of sums everything up in in that short space of time. So I'll put that up on the YouTube channel as well, and I might put that in the email, the link for it up on the email as well tomorrow. So just like, the, um, how do we... Obviously, um, I'm not, yeah, how, just there's a question there. If you have a coach who's all about winning ahead of player development, Obviously, that's your role as coaching officer, maybe to um, with some. I wouldn't just do it on your own. Maybe get a couple of other um, executive people in the club. Maybe just observe it, so and then just have maybe a word with them. That's all you can do. And if if it comes to it, I'd be replacing them because if it's all win win win, um, like the kids are going to be are going to get fed up of it. You're going to lose players because you're, they're probably only focusing on the stronger players in the team. So I would be have a have a word with them, obviously, and explain that the club has a, has a, a policy that it's all about development and that the, all players must get an equal opportunity. And if if it comes to it, and if if they aren't willing to agree, I'd be thinking about replacing them in the club. And that might be ruthless, but if your role as coaching officer um, is to look after the the role of 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 the of, and support the coaches and, and players in the club. And if you if you let that go on, you're going to lose players in the long run. Like I honestly think the coaching officer role is more important than the chairman, the secretary of the club. Okay, you have more influence over more people. Um, like the amount of players and coaches that you're you're overseeing. So it's really important that the players and kids come first. I hope that answers that. I'm not sure what your name is. I think it's just a, a, maybe a college email. And, I'm not sure what the name is. <clears throat> okay, so that that concludes us for tonight. Um, thanks very much. If anyone has any issues, feel free to contact us. Thank you.